Welcome. My name is Dr. Karin Shmueli and I'm the undergraduate admissions tutor for the Department of Medical Physics and Bioengineering. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what medical physics and bioengineering actually are. Um, if you see here, I've got a bunch of images which actually encapsulate some of the technologies and um, imaging techniques and developments that we actually research and teach here in our department. Um, you can see up on the top left, um, we've got a ultrasound image of a fetus. And if you look um, in the middle there on the top, you can see we've got a CT scanner with somebody in it and somebody standing um, next to them as well. Um, on the top right, we've got somebody who has been helped by some prosthetics um, and some neuro-stimulator um, implants. Um, on the bottom right, we've got a skull image that was made um, using that CT scanner. Um, and you can see that this person has uh, a, a defect in their skull, which medical physics and bioengineering techniques can actually help repair, and I'll show you that a bit later. Um, if you look in the, in the middle there, you can see uh, a magnetic resonance image. And next to that is an image of this baby. Um, this baby's actually got something attached to their head. And what that is, is some optic fibers and a light source. And um, we're actually able to shine light into that baby's brain and monitor um, the, the status of that baby's brain by looking at the light that is scattered through that baby's brain. On the left is an image that some people often think looks like a foot, um, but is actually, um, at the bottom left here, is actually um, an image of somebody's um, finger or thumb. And this is an X-ray image. It was actually one of the very first X-ray images ever taken in the UK. Um, it is an image of um, someone's finger, and it has, if you see, there's a straight line at the bottom there, a dark line, which is actually a sewing needle that has broken off in this person's finger. Um, and this image was actually taken here at UCL, I believe in the chemistry department, um, but it was one of the very first X-ray images taken here in the UK. Um, and in the middle, um, you can probably see with these, these bright coloured images, um, this is actually an image of somebody's forearm. Um, on the left is a, an MRI image showing the two bones and the muscle. And um, in the middle there, those brightly coloured images are actually optical images using a technique called near-infrared um, spectroscopy. So these are just some of the techniques that we use. So you can see that medical physics and bioengineering involves a lot of monitoring and imaging. Um, it also, so those, that includes techniques like X-ray CT, magnetic resonance imaging, which is what I do, and ultrasound that you can see down here at the bottom. Um, and you've also got a diagram here of actually explaining how a CT scanner works. So you've got an X-ray source um, that moves around and a detector array that's picking up um, the transmitted X-rays there. Medical physics and bioengineering also involves therapy and prosthetics. So you can see here that we've designed um, a plate to uh, repair this defect in somebody's skull. Um, medical physicists also and bioengineers are involved in phototherapy, so using lasers to, to treat people. Um, here on the right, is, this person is cycling around the UCL quad, helped by some neurostimulators. Um, you might have seen medical physics and bioengineering in the news. Um, last year, this Pakistani teenager um, was helped by medical physics and bioengineering. Um, again, she had this, this injury um, in her skull, and bioengineering techniques helped to design this special plate um, that was designed to fit um, that injury very, very well and was um, able to be put in by surgeons. Um, and you can see here a fantastic um, CT image showing how that, that plate was designed. And that's um, the teenager walking away healthy after her, her surgery. Some of you might have seen images like this in the news. This is um, a, a brain. Um, it's rendered so you can see the surface of the brain and all the foldings within it. Um, and you can see these bright blobs are actually um, produced using a technique called functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. Um, and these are experiments where people are um, perhaps shown different images in an, inside an MRI scanner, and we can detect which areas of their brain are actually responding um, to these images and um, map those as brightly colored blobs on the surface of the brain. 
Some of you might have also seen this album cover. This image here was produced by actually a different MRI technique called diffusion tensor imaging. Um, this technique is able to follow the diffusion of water molecules along the white matter fiber tracks that connect up the different regions of the brain. Um, and this was actually on, on billboards around London um, last year. Finally, some of you might have seen uh, on television um, this television series where people were actually given um, a drug while they're inside an MRI scanner or a placebo. Um, and this wasn't just done for, um, to spark controversy. But this was actually a real scientific study to see if this drug might have potential for treating um, post-traumatic stress disorder. So all these images were produced using MRI and using um, medical physics and bioengineering techniques. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our department. Who are we? We're about 20 lecturers like myself, so I teach MRI. Um, we usually have about 80 undergraduates and about 150 postgraduate students. Um, we're usually based in the Mallet Place Engineering Building, but also spread around nearby hospitals. Our department has around £30 million in research funding, so we're a very research active department. Um, so Again, what are um, medical physics and bioengineering and what would you actually study if you came um, and did our courses here? Well, we actually offer um, two types of degrees. Um, the first two are medical physics undergraduate degrees and I'll tell you a little bit about our new degree courses in biomedical engineering um, at the end. So our medical physics degrees are an MSci in medical physics, that's a four-year course, or a BSc, a three-year course. Um, the good thing about those is they have the first two years in common, so you can actually swap between those two degrees up until the end of your second year. And in fact, the first year um, is taught jointly, the first two years, sorry, are taught jointly with the Department of Physics and Astronomy. So in those first two years, you can actually be sitting in quite large lecture theatres with perhaps over 100 students. Um, you also have one or two courses in the first two years taught by us in the medical physics um, and bioengineering department. Um, and those are much smaller classes of about 30 students. That allows us to be much more intimate and interactive um, and have a really good discussion. So um, in your third and fourth year, you'll actually have about half of your courses taught in the medical physics and bioengineering department. Um, so again, those are, those are much more um, interactive and allow for a better discussion. Um, this is just a table to show you a little bit about the course structure. Um, this information is all available online, but you can see that um, the turquoise color are the courses that are taught by, um, in our department, in, in medical physics and bioengineering, and um, the paler coloured courses are taught in the physics and astronomy department. Um, and again, here you can see it's a very similar course structure for the four-year course, the MSI, and um, in your final year, whether you do the BSc or the MSI, you are able to do um, a long medical physics project, and this is often a real research project, and it's often the highlight of students' experience with us. So, um, in your first year, you'll do a course in the Medical Physics and Bioengineering Department um, as an introduction to medical imaging. In the second year, you'll look at the physics of the human body and also an introduction to biophysics, so looking at things like cell membranes. In the third and fourth year, you've got many more medical physics and bioengineering options to choose from. Um, for example, you've got the medical imaging with non-ionizing radiation course. That's um, half ultrasound and half MRI, which I teach. Um, then you've got many other courses including radiotherapy, medical, de medical devices, medical electronics and physiological monitoring. So what are your career options if you come and do a degree in medical physics with us? Well, the good thing is you've got um, as many options as anyone who does a standard physics degree, um, but the most common medical physics career options are often becoming a scientist in the National Health Service. A lot of our students enjoy it so much that they actually want to stay on and take a higher degree in medical physics, so an MSc or a PhD. Um, and many actually go off to work in the medical technology industry. One of my students who was in my lectures actually went and worked for um, an MRI company um, who does MRI uh, for veterinary purposes and she was actually using um, the science that I had taught her in my lectures in her job. So here's some information about a degree that's new this year, so the first intake will be in September 2014 and this is part of the new integrated engineering program. So this is the biomedical engineering degrees, the BEng or the MEng, um, the 
uh, bachelor's degree is a three-year course and the MEng is a four-year undergraduate degree. Um, here, the first two years are taught in conjunction with many other departments in the Faculty of Engineering. So in the first year, you have an introduction to medical imaging um, and modelling, analysis, mathematics and engineering design. Um, in the second year, you also have those similar courses um, provided and taught by the Medical Physics and Bioengineering Department, that's the Introduction to Biophysics, as well as many other optional courses from across all the departments in the Faculty of Engineering. In the third year, you do a he healthcare engineering project and again choose options from across the faculty. And if you stay for a fourth year, you can do an advanced level project and choose optional advanced level courses from across um, the engineering and medicine um, departments. So if you'd like more information, you can check online. Here are some useful websites, both um, in our department and um, on the main UCL site. And if you've got any more questions, then please don't hesitate to um, contact me. Okay, many thanks.